So it's looking like the weather is flirting with us when it comes to we could possibly have some snow. I know <laughs> people are excited about it. And speaking of flirting, we are continuing the conversation from the last hour of our show about flirting. This time we're going to talk about flirting in your marriage That's and right. why it's so important. Blanca, I'm sure that people don't think about it as much once you get married that you have to continue flirting, right? And they don't because a lot of people think I already have them. But let me let you in on a little secret. You got to keep them. Mm. And one way, I mean, when you get married, you want the person to be attracted to you, right? You want to make sure that you're the, what is it saying, the apple of their eye. Right. So you, you do have to continue that, that flirting, that dating to make them feel special. Um, because if there aren't any hugs or kisses or touches or compliments or the I love you's or, you know, or how you deliver it, right? So there's a difference in saying, you look great versus you look great. You know, when you have mm -hmm. the voice, the inflection, yeah. the body language to go with it, then people can tell the difference. Your partner can tell the difference and they want to feel special. Yeah, everyone wants to right. be treated like that. Right. I've not met one person yet that says, I love it when my partner ignores me. <laughs> I just I right? haven't met that person. Yeah. No. That's, I just I, I, I don't haven't think met that's that possible. person. Okay, so what do you do though if you find yourself flirting with someone that is not your spouse? You stop. Truthfully, you just stop yourself when you catch it. Or maybe if you don't realize it, because some people will say they don't realize that they're flirting, but you can tell somebody else's response. And then when you notice it, then you stop. And then you internally have to ask yourself why. Why are you seeking attention or giving attention to somebody other than your spouse? And then when you figure it out, fix it because if you don't it's going to lead to what to a path of trouble a do you really problems. right and do you really want problems in your relationship in your marriage and i would venture to say the answer to that is no okay so if someone's sitting at home and they're like oh my goodness i've been doing this but how do i flirt with my you know my husband or my wife what is the answer to that well, it, it, it starts when you see them. It starts with a smile. It starts with your tone of voice. A lot of times people will go through the motions and they'll say things, but it's not reflected in their voice. Um, it's, whether it's a touch, a kiss, and I love you, a, a note in, in, in their briefcase, or let's say they're going on a trip, you can write a little note and say, oh, I can't wait to see those brown eyes when you get back. I mean, who wouldn't like that? You know, it's yeah. just, and remember this, it's your responsibility to keep the spark alive in your relationship. A lot of times you want to put it on your spouse, but you need to accept that responsibility too. It takes two to tango as the saying goes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Try mm -hmm. to think back to your newlywed stage, which is what mm -hmm. I'm kind of in right now. Try to think <laughs> back when you were young and then you were, you just gotten married and all the excitement. Try to bring that back to our life, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And you want to maintain it over the years. Well, thank you so much, Blanca, for joining us this morning. Love this conversation. If you want to continue this conversation with Blanca, head over to her Facebook page. That's Blanca Cobb, body language expert. Give her a like and just ride on her timeline and she'll be sure to get back with you.